It's so exciting to be on video again. I'm kind of loving it. I'm loving it as usual. Super cash here in our spot. Um, and today's episode, we have an interview. So not only is it like our first interview on the Brand Mary podcast in quite some time, but it's also our first video interview. And I couldn't think of a better topic to talk about than social media. All right, if you know anything about me and my approach to marketing, you know that I truly have a love-hate relationship with social media. The more that I talk to entrepreneurs, I know that I am so not alone here. And many of the members in the Brand Mary community really have this kind of like, ooh, ah, ooh, ah relationship with social media where we understand why it's beneficial for our marketing, but we also don't want to rely on it. And here at Brand Mary, we do not emphasize social media marketing. We use it as a tool, let's say a cherry on top, but the fundamental of all of our marketing really comes down to those search engine platforms. This is why I talk so much about SEO. Last week's episode was about SEO. We just released an SEO course, which you can get some more details about at brandmary.com slash SEO. But here's the thing. I also know that we can't ignore social media as much as we want to, as much as I want to, right? It is there. So how do we make it fun? How do we use it to our benefit? And I think one of the questions that I get asked a lot is like, how do we use SEO if we have an in-person service? How are we using the whole online, you know, setup to actually drive foot traffic in our business? And so I knew that I wanted to bring on my friend Jody Brown. Okay, so Jody and I met inside of a program all about launching. And we instantly connected because we both kind of were a little stand, didn't really engage in the group. I know, I know, it's it's a default that I have. You know, we take the information and we apply it. But we both really respected each other's business and what we were building. So we started to connect ironically on social media, on Instagram and chat back and forth. And so over the year, we've become really good friends. We've also come together to create a peer mastermind, which has been amazing. And I just so admire Jody's attention you know, attack to social media, her approach to social media, because as she will tell you in today's episode, she genuinely enjoys it. Like she genuinely loves social media and has fun with it. And that is inspiring to me as someone who doesn't really always enjoy marketing on social media. And as a consumer, I don't really love it. And so I'm always looking for people who enjoy it and to pick their brains and be, why? <laughs> why is that? So we had an amazing conversation on how to use social media for your business, specifically driving foot traffic if you are an in-person business. Now, Jody's background is, uh, she'll tell you in today's episode, she was a former hairstylist turned marketing, I'm gonna call her a marketing guru, for hairstylists and photographers and in-person services. And so she knows what she is talking about. And a lot of the gems that she shared today, you're gonna hear and watch us nerd out together because we both have a very similar approach to marketing in general. Marketing doesn't work if you don't understand your brand. But once you have that foundation, then there are so many cool, amazing things that you can do to get in front of your ideal customer. And Jody's approach is all about social media. So we're gonna talk about reels. We're gonna talk about carousel posts. We're gonna talk about what not to do on social media. We're gonna talk about niching down. And of course, we're gonna talk about branding, okay? So let's get into today's interview with my dear friend, Jody. <music> Jody, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. You're the first interview in a really long time. And so I am so honored that you took time out of your schedule to join me today. Well, I'm honored that you invited me on. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I shared a little bit in the intro that, you know, we connected in a former program and ironically enough, talked on social media, still talk yeah. on social media, um, <laughs> and recently came together in a peer mastermind, uh, which we started. And I knew I wanted to have you on the podcast for a few reasons. Um, 
before I jump into what those reasons are, can you just share a little bit about your story and just kind of how you came to be where you are today (laughs) as an online marketer? Absolutely. And I will try to make this short, but forgive me because it's like kind of a long story. So I actually, uh, my only formal education is beauty school. I went to hair school right at a high school and I worked as a stylist, um, both, you know, in a commission setting and as an independent pro. And so what kind of where my journey started is I was in the industry for a long time and then I was feeling like quite burnt out. So I actually got into the sales side of the beauty industry. I ended up working as a sales rep, working with major brands and salons and all these things. And there were things I loved about that job. And there were also things I hated about that job. And so when I got pregnant with my son, I decided to kind of step away and go back behind the chair. Um, I was off for 18 months when I had my son. I live in Canada. I know that I'm blessed. I did not get maternity leave though, because I was self-employed. So don't be too, <laughs> I'm not too, don't mad be too about jealous. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so when I went back, I decided to go back to the salon because I knew that, you know, that was a skill set that I could fall back on. Um, but it was very different than when I had left before. So I, came into a salon that was brand new in an area with zero foot traffic, did not have any kind of reputation. It was literally in a construction zone still. Um, And, but it was one of the only salons that would actually work within my new availability. Mm. Um, Cause I'm not sure what it's like in the U S or all over the world where your listeners are from, but here in Canada, like there's no real shift work childcare options. Um, So it was open, you know, like nine to five. And that's not the typical hours that stylists work. So I realized really quickly that I couldn't rely on being, you know, waiting for walk-ins Saturdays and evenings and all of these things. And so I am scrappy, if anything, and I decided that I was going to, you know, put it together and I was going to learn how to market And I didn't even really know what that meant at the time, but all I knew was I was going to start, like, I listened to all the podcasts. I think I started with the being boss podcast Mm -hmm. and the gold digger podcast. And I learned enough of the lingo that I felt comfortable seeking out education. So I started watching webinars. I started, um, you know, I took online courses and all of these things just to learn how to get clients really and market and through that combined with a lot of trial and error, I really quickly, like within a year working the hours that I really wanted to work and using Instagram built up a clientele that enabled me to go independent. So I was able to start my own business behind the chair and, you know, that was really successful and really great. Um, but you and I have in common that we're both wanderers, (laughs) let's put it that way. Right. So (laughs) I had long been called to do something that had some location freedom. And I also like throughout this time realized that I was actually enjoying the business side of my business as an independent stylist and, you know, the content creation, the marketing, the ideas, like all of that more than I was enjoying doing the hair. Mm -hmm. Um, So the kind of like aha moment came when I... (laughs) you know, this is a very long story. Let me just like kind of wrap this up quickly. But basically I was going through some really hard things personally. And, uh, I, it was causing me to withdraw quite a bit. So I got this like out of the blue text message from, or Instagram message from someone whose course I'd taken in the hair industry. So she taught just like business structures, um, boundaries, all that kind of stuff. And she's like, Hey, I'm teaching a class in Edmonton, which is close to where I live. Do you want to come? And for whatever reason, I don't know, I call it like divine timing, but like, I literally was saying no to everything. I hadn't seen my best friend in a year and she lives like 20 minutes from me. And I was like, you know what? I have to go to this class. So I went and during that time, it was the first moment that I ever realized that not everyone knew what I knew in terms of marketing and social media. Mm -hmm. And someone asked a question about Instagram specifically And the educator was like, I don't actually teach that. But like, as she was saying that the entire room 
except for me, like erupted with all these, like, I hate this as part of our job now. Like, oh, it's so annoying. And these are all really like accomplished business owners in the beauty industry. Two weeks later, we shut down, everything shut down. I terminated my lease at the salon I was at and I decided to go all in on marketing and, Mm -hmm. you know, starting my business. So that's my story of how I... (laughs) We love storytelling here at Bram Mary. So you tell that story. Okay. (laughs) I love a good founder story. Well, you know, and I think you pull on some really important touch points, you know, like not everyone who starts a business loves the marketing side of things, you know, and I am just like you, you know, and for me, it was marketing. I kind of fell into over time just because I was doing it. I was like, wow, this is fun. But really branding was like the shock to my system of like how I understood branding, like at its core Mm -hmm. and realized that a lot of people don't have that knowledge. So I think it's just proof that like your journey can also unfold and kind of point you in the direction that your business should go. Absolutely. You've pivoted a lot too. Like obviously, you know, hairstylist, you're opening up your agency, which officially is open probably at the time of this yes. release. Um, so, you know, I would love for us to focus on social media because when we first met, I was really attracted to the way that you handle social media. And because you were really at the time solely working in the beauty or hairstylist industry, which yeah. is like in person, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people, when they have an in-person, they're like, oh, I need to be on social media, but like, they don't know what that means or what they should be. So true. Um, So I would love for you to share, you know, a little bit about maybe even just a few tips on how in-person businesses, in-person services, particularly can use social media to drive foot traffic in the door. I mean, yeah, there's so many different ways and that's exactly what I did, honestly. Like, and I also love just that you said about branding, because I think when people think they have a marketing problem, 90% of the time, it's actually a branding problem. So thank you for saying that. Yeah, it goes, it's so foundational. Um, And my program for beauty pros is actually called Beauty Biz Brand Academy because the brand piece is everything. So I love, that's one of the things that attracted me to you is like your focus on it. And it's just like, no BS. I don't know if I could swear on this podcast. But, oh, swear all um, <laughs> day. It's an explicit podcast. I love it. So yeah, you're no bullshit approach. And I love the way that you just are super real and you, you cut through the fluff. So I just wanted to say like your approach to branding, I love it. And it's so, I think we just compliment each other so well there. So when it comes to local businesses using social media, I think that the biggest um, mistake or misstep that I see is not properly filtering information. And what I mean by that is they'll see a coach who's talking to predominantly coaches or influencers or, you know, whatever it is in that space, in the online space, and then they'll just take that and try to apply it to their local business and be like, why the hell isn't this working? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, you know, one of the things that I see so much is like, I'll see local businesses and I'll say hairstyles because that's the biggest, um, you know, but this applies to any service-based business where you are looking for foot traffic and there's not even an indication of the location. There's, there's no information that would lead me to believe that I could even work with you. And you've got about, you know, five seconds on the generous end when someone gets to your page to show them, you know, if you're for them and if you're what they're looking for, what you do, who you serve, all of these good things. And that's one of the biggest missteps I see is that all of that information is missing, right? Right. So that's a really big piece. And I think there's a lot of possibility that is overlooked in terms of local businesses building their brands using social media, because that's exactly what I did through networking, through getting really intentional. And I'm talking networking on Instagram. Mm -hmm. One of my best friends who is co-hosting our Italy retreat in October, we met because she's a photographer. I was a hairstylist and we partnered together for some extra visibility. So I think I, I think I answered your question. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's a great starting point for us. Like 
the the important information is often missing. And I think that goes back to like optimizing your account, which is something that I yes. talk a lot about when it comes to social, uh, not social media, <laughs> definitely not that when it yeah. comes to your website and, you mm -hmm. know, I teach SEO specifically and mm -hmm. optimizing your, like having your website there and having all the content, that's amazing. But like, yeah. is it optimized for that traffic? And so yeah. what I'm hearing you say is that like, it's really important that those, uh, you know, local businesses yeah. have information about not only like what they provide yeah. and maybe even their specific niche, which I'd love to dissect 100%. a little bit more, but also like, <laughs> where the hell are you located? <laughs> like, yes, are you nearby? I, <laughs> I post this every 10 days minimum. And I like, literally it's like a running joke on my Instagram page that like, you know, if I'll stop posting this, when I stop looking at all of your pages and half of them don't have the location. So like until then, this is our regularly scheduled reminder to add the location <laughs> into oh your gosh. bio. I love that. So, and fun fact, actually, that I think you'll enjoy. If you are someone who has really optimized your Instagram page and there's not a lot of other things in your area, so particularly small town, um, if you're somewhere that doesn't have a whole lot of what you offer, your Instagram will actually show up on Google. So it might not be at the top, but like SEO is something that companies like Instagram are actually making a major, major push towards, which is really beneficial for local business owners. So if you can optimize your bio and include like the formula I teach basically is in the name section, you want to have, you know, what people are likely to be searching for and your location. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, if you are, you know, I'll use the look, like I'll use a couple examples, like boudoir photographer in Memphis, or like you're a branding photographer in Edmonton, or you're a, you know, event planner, or you're mm -hmm. a hairstylist or an esthetician that and your city is really important because when I looked and I searched this up, I was looking for examples for branding photographers in my city and two people came up. Yeah. And you're like, I know there's more than that. I know 20, like off the top of my head. So yeah. I'm like, okay. So like, this is where there's a lot of work to be done. But if you do this right, there's also a lot of opportunity because a lot of people aren't taking advantage. Yeah. So let's talk about that because, you know, recently I shared that I was like boop, up to here with social media and this mm -hmm. has been an ongoing thing. I think a lot of it, you know, just comes down to my personality. Like I'm not Fair. naturally a person that wants to be on social media. It's kind of funny that I built my entire business on like my phone and a computer. <laughs> Very ironic, but like, Honestly, the one of the reason, two reasons that I've stuck around is one, I love showing up and building my brand, you know? Yeah. And so if I just change my thinking around it, it's great. And number two, I see the changes coming with SEO. Instagram yeah. has got to keep up or they're going to get left behind. And yeah. I logged in the other day, the same day that I shared a post about wanting to quit and saw the little bubbles at the top Ooh, of my search. Yeah. So we're starting to see this category you know, these categories showing up. So yep. how can local businesses kind of get ahead of the game and choose the right search terms for them on Instagram? That is a fabulous question. And I, this is, again, another thing that I see a lot of is we almost sometimes slip into like professional jargon. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest advice I can give you and when it comes to, um, you know, optimizing for this probably applies to SEO as well as yes, like figure out does. what they're actually searching. <laughs> yeah. I know it sounds obvious, but like for stylists, for example, lived in color, I'm sure we've all heard the term by now. Um, maybe not though. Like maybe mm -hmm. if you're listening, you're like, what the hell is lived in color? Like I that's don't know an what example. You're talking about. Okay. So see, this is me spending too much of my time in the hair world. Um, but basically lived in color would be like balayage or like blended color okay. or something like that. Right. So I see a lot of stylists though, who have blended color or who have lived in color. And I'm like, listen, we cannot be using terms that our clients don't understand because then not only are you not going to show up in searches, but also if they do happen to stumble upon your profile, like you haven't educated them yet as to what that term means. So like you can do that 
afterwards. Maybe you even do that throughout your content, but you really can't be like putting words that your audience is not going to understand because they're never going to find you. <laughs> like yes. that's the biggest thing, honestly. Okay. Um, the other thing too, is like using multiple iterations. So like, it's not just like, if I were say creating a profile for like, you know, a uh, photographer, I've seen some that say things like portraiture, Okay. Portraiture, like that sounds very great and very fancy, but like, I have no idea what that is. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> so what is in it for me? Like, what is, why would I choose to do this? So for instance, for, I'm going to use the branding photographer example again, because I think like, that's just a good example outside the hair industry, but I would be leading with what's in it for them. So I would be saying things like content photos or like, you know, um, high res images for your website, like mm -hmm. on top of what you're saying so that it's like the value that you provide is so clear once they get there. And the other thing that's like left out almost all the time is a call to action. Mm -hmm. We think about call to actions and content, but on your bio, like that is your opportunity. This is your chance to get them to your other platforms because you don't own your social. We know this, right? So you want to make sure that you are incentivizing them to take the next step with you, to go to your website, to, you know, download your freebie to, and local businesses can do this too, to book an appointment, whatever that looks like. That's a huge missed opportunity. If you're not directing them after they found your page, because that's the most excited about your brand they're ever going to be is like right when they hit the follow button. Yes. Um, oh, I'm so glad I'm recording this on video now because I think people are like seeing my face and I'm yes. just like, oh my gosh, you're speaking my language. You know, <laughs> and what you said about seeing the jargon online, right? Or being in the industry. This is something mm -hmm. that I see a lot of. And I think, you know, back to what you said about filtering information, like if you're getting your, um, insight into how you should be marketing or the words you should be using from somebody that isn't marketing to your same ideal customer. Like yes. you can't be copying and pasting that stuff. And like, that goes no. back to what we talked about the branding. Like you have to know your ideal customer yeah. and meet them where they are. And that's what I tell my clients. Like you might know what they need, but if yeah. they're not there yet, like you've got to use the language to where they are in their specific buying journey. Um, Absolutely. And you also said something that I wanted to dive a little bit more into it was kind of like niching down related, you know, yeah. like you're not just saying photographer, you're saying like a brand photographer. Mm -hmm. So can we talk about this a little bit? Um, you know, why don't you recommend that someone just become an influencer, you know, on social media? Why do they need to niche down as they're growing their business? Oh, I was listening to, um, a really great podcast who put it so well the other day, her name is Ellen Yin. She hosts the cubicle CEO podcast. It's, okay. it's fantastic. And she was breaking down the difference between influencer creator. And I was like, this is great influencer. It's about them, right? As a creator or a marketer, it's about your audience. And so for these major influencers, and I, I don't know where that part of the industry is going to go because I think it's changing so much, but it really is about them. It's about their lives. It's about, you know, their families, their hobbies, like what they do, what they're up to, all of these things. And typically the goal for influencers is to sell people on other brands. So mm -hmm. they're selling a lifestyle, right? Essentially. Whereas with a creator or an entrepreneur, what we're doing is we are trying to educate people and, and really help them decide and pre-qualify themselves for whether or not they'd be a good fit to work with us. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think the the mistake is that like, we take a look at these, you know, and there's this one guy who I'm not going to name him, but he teaches basically like how to become internet famous. And his product is like a $37 membership or whatever. And it's literally just like, always like create all this quantity and your feet shouldn't match and all of this stuff and blah, blah, blah. So basically like the antithesis to branding, which I'm like, okay, we need to really dissect what this person is selling though. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they are selling 
a $37 product on how to get internet famous. That requires a very different level of trust than premium services or courses or coaching or anything like that. So an influencer's you know, currency, if you will, is engagement. Whereas as entrepreneurs and creators, like you need to measure your, your currency in, in money and dollars and clients. (laughs) That's what it comes down to. Oh my gosh. I love that. I don't think a lot of people realize that for an influencer piece, it's like, yes, there's like the affiliate element of marketing, but they're also getting paid to promote this stuff because of their engagement or their follower account. You as a business owner, it doesn't matter how many followers you have. Like I've been sitting under 10 K for years, you know, like my growth is non-existent and, you know, I still have a very successful six figure, multiple six figure a year business. I get sometimes one comment on a post. It is not always the indicator of whether people are purchasing from you, you know, especially if it's a high ticket item. Absolutely. And I mean, I think we've all heard the story about the influencer who had like 3 million plus followers. It might even be 30 million. I butcher this every time minimum 3 million. It might be a lot more. And they decided to sell like Mm t-shirts and $30 t-shirts couldn't sell. I think the total they sold was three. And so they lost tons and tons of money on this production and all of the stuff because yeah, they had an audience, but they didn't have true influence. They didn't have trust. Right. So So that's the difference is like, as business owners, we need to be thinking about building trust and Mm -hmm. there's ways that you can get engagement too. And like, you know, reach more people while staying really true. But like my approach to social media is one that I feel very confident if Instagram were to shut down tomorrow, my students, my clients, we could take what we have and, and communicate that through other channels because it's not about just like getting Instagram famous. It's about communicating your core brand and like what you provide for your clients. Okay. All right. Here we go. We're going to get into this now. My husband and I were talking the other day and I'm probably going to record a whole episode about this, but I said, you know, I'm not interested in giving someone a fish. Like, have you ever heard that phrase? Like give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach Mm -hmm. him how to fish eats for a lifetime. I'm not interested in teaching entrepreneur, giving entrepreneur a plug and play template or a fill in the blank, or like, even like these are, this is what you should share every day on social media, because it's not teaching you Mm -hmm. what you need to know as a marketer so that you can, like you said, pivot. And so I'd love to talk about that a little bit more. Like what are some of the pieces of content that you would Mm -hmm. recommend someone integrate into their social media strategy that can help build this trust and position the brand, you know, for these end goals that we keep talking about getting paid. Yeah. Okay. I actually have a framework that I refer back to, and uh, this is the same framework we use in my agency. So for all of our clients, we use this framework inside my programs. It's what I teach. It's what I use myself. And basically what we want to do is we want to balance education, connection, um, and, you know, incentivizing people to act. So I call it inspire to action essentially. And so when we talk about educational content, I think there's this misconception that the only way to create educational content is like how to tutorials and all of this kind of stuff, right. Which mm-hmm. can be great sometimes. Like I'm, there's nothing wrong with giving that win, but I also think of it as like educating them on a different perspective or a different mindset or a different approach. So mm-hmm. It's funny. This is a little bit off topic, but I keep hearing like all this conversation about, you know, chat GPT and AI is going to take over for marketers and all of this. And I'm like, if everything that you talk about can be found on Google, then yeah, absolutely. You should be scared. (laughs) Yes. But that's not the only thing we should be doing in our content, right? Like there's also that connection piece. And so like for for local business owners, that's going to look like sharing the experience. So if you're a brick and mortar location, like I want to be able to picture myself in your space. I want to be able to, you know, know what that vibe is going to be. And that comes back to knowing your brand, but like, this is 
social media, I still think like, I am still loving it because I think it's this like beautiful place that we can like, you know, communicate our message to the masses. Right. And I think that by focusing on those areas, like how are you connecting? How are you telling your story? Um, the framework too is like, what qualifies you to teach? Why should I listen to you? Or Mm -hmm. what qualifies you to be, you know, my service provider? Like what, what is sets you apart? Why should I trust you? These are all pieces that you need to think about when it comes to creating content, because if you fall into, I'm just only going to post stuff that's going to get great engagement, then you're going to be leaving out a lot of the really important stuff, Right. right? Right. And I think that, you know, I think that's the thing. I think, you know, especially going back to what you said about the chat GPT, that's similar to trends to me, you know, and I think that's the thing. There's a lot of entrepreneurs who will use Instagram as an example, because even though I don't love it, like I get it and I know how to (laughs) use it, you know? Um, but if you are just constantly focused on trends, you are hitting that tier of just maybe brand awareness, right? Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. question, like, are you actually getting in front of your ideal customer? Like how trendy are you being, or have you done enough to kind of apply that trend to your business? Which you do a fantastic job of, by the way, I love your reels. (laughs) I'm like, I've seen that trend everywhere. And then you're like, yeah. (laughs) Um, I also have a client of mine, um, beautiful one midwifery. They're going to be on the podcast in, uh, Uh June. They do a fantastic job of applying yeah. reels to midwifery and, you know, female care, you know, different things like that. So, um, you know, I think it's like when you're focused on the trend piece of the virality, you're just hitting brand awareness, but then there's this brand yeah. attraction, brand connection piece as well, where like you're saying, people want to know, like, who is the person behind the brand? Mm-hmm. What does the, the place that you're wanting me to walk into locally look exactly. like? Exactly. What are things that you have? What is it like? I know I love what yeah. you say, like being in the chair. Like, what is it like yeah. being in the chair of your salon? And then of course, like you're saying, it's a su- your framework is like super similar to mine, right? With different yeah. you know words. The brand connection for us at Brand Mary is that, you know, the, the action. Like, all right, yeah. these people have built this connection with you. Now give them the clear next step. Yes. And there's so much fear, I think, around selling. And this is interesting, actually, because um, one of the things that I I always think is funny when I'm talking to my clients is my engagement on Instagram actually increases a lot when I launch. And most people have the complete opposite experience. And I think what it is when it comes to Instagram, that this is like a really like take this away and apply this to your, to your Instagram strategy. But like, I I think where a lot of people kind of fall down sometimes is that it's like either they, they think they overthink it. So they think Mm -hmm. they need to like give away like every single thing that they know. And then it becomes too overwhelming for a piece of content. Someone's going to spend like eight seconds consuming. So it's like the overthinking piece, but then also like just knowing that you're, it's like picturing it as part of a patchwork quilt instead Mm -hmm. of being so obsessed with the outcome of every single post. That's where I see a lot of people give up um, you know, start to feel down about it. And the expectation for engagement has changed. So like, if you're still weighing your engagement against what you were getting five years ago, like it's going to be disappointment after disappointment. (laughs) There is no baseline anymore. That's the biggest thing. Like we used to have our accounts where there would be like a baseline amount of engagement. Every single post would get that's gone. It really Mm -hmm. is gone. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you can make each piece of content, like have a micro win for your audience, whether it's getting to know you better, whether it's becoming informed about your services, like whether it is, you know, something that's going to shift their perspective or give them a little bit of education, like that I think is the important thing. And also making sure that like everything that you post online, like has value in and of itself. Right. Right. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. I always tell my clients to ask yourself, like, what's, 
the value that you are providing your ideal customer, right? With every yes. single post, every time I even show up on a story, I'm like, where's yes. the value in this bad boy? I think I did a rant the other day on yeah. like entrepreneurship on stories. And yeah. by the way, if you ever want like a good behind the scene, Michelle rant situation, definitely check out my <laughs> Instagram stories. Um, but I was feeling it. I was like, you know, there's all this 10 K in 10 days and all this stuff. And it's like, this is work, you know, like mm. this, is, this takes work. And, um, the response that I got from that was amazing. And same yeah. with, you know, the post I made the other day about like not loving social media, like yeah. the response was amazing. And I think, so to add to kind of what you were saying in terms of the value piece, the education piece, don't be afraid to provide those industry disrupts. Stand out, damn it. <laughs> and relatability is actually one of the phases of our framework as well, because, the, and that's exactly what it is. Like, you know, your customer so well, you know, your community so well that you can speak to that. And I think that's a very large missing piece for a lot of people too. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really an important takeaway. Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about reels. Like I don't want to make this whole thing about reels. Yeah. I think people should just, you know, follow you to see how masterfully <laughs> do it. But, you know, one time you were telling me that carousel posts and that kind of content does really well for you. So can you yes. share a little kind of behind the scenes of, you know, what you're seeing, you know, working on social media right now? Um, yeah. Because I think that this is important. I think as, um, consumers, but especially people who own businesses, we look at other people who are like, oh, they're doing amazing. They're doing yeah. great. But like, well, I don't know what the hell's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, totally. and if it's actually working or not, they could be testing just like you're testing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'd love some insight on that. I think that I just want to underscore before I all, and I'm totally down to like, I'm very transparent. So I'll tell you exactly what's working for me and what's not. But I also want to just highlight and underscore the word testing because mm -hmm. I'm testing all the time. Mm -hmm. This week, I had a post that reached like 185,000 people. Mm -hmm. I had a post that reached 900. So <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the reality. Like, it doesn't always like, and so if you post the one post that reaches 900 people and then you just overanalyze and you start freaking out and you never post anything again, because then you're not going to ever develop that like mastery and feel for your audience and get to that point. Right. So that's really important. Um, what's working right now. Let me just pull up my thing. So off the top of my head, quote posts are working exceptionally well for me. Here's a caveat. I always call out my ideal client in the text. Yes, you so do. If, yeah. If you look at my feed, it's like stylist, hairstylist, brand as a hairstylist. Like that is probably one of the things that when we have a client come into our, into our agency, my probably the biggest amount of time I spend is literally looking at that first slide of the carousel or that quote post or that first line, because that is everything. If you mm. can hook that attention, it's, it honestly is probably the most important thing. So many people say my call to actions don't work. It's not that your call to actions don't work. It's that they never read it. They didn't get there. Yeah. Right. Cause the hook is what matters. Mm -hmm. Um, carousel posts, are doing fantastic. And here's a really easy way for you to make one. This does not have to be like five tips to do this. Those are great too, but even thread style carousel posts. Mm -hmm. So everyone's saying, oh, nobody reads captions anymore, which is not true because people do read captions, but a great way to repurpose mm -hmm. <laughs> your, your longer captions is to put them in like a thread style carousel post. Um, and it's funny because even if you look onto like Instagram specifically, I want to dive into the caption thing a little bit, because this is like a very pervasive rumor that is circulated a lot. I think mm -hmm. Instagram being SEO, right. And then not using enough words, like this could be why you're, why, if someone's struggling, they are struggling to get seen, right? Because if you're not giving enough context, Instagram has nothing to categorize. Mm. So even if people aren't reading all the way through your captions, like me, be sure to include enough context, 
And there are still people that read them. I do. I don't watch I do a lot too. of short form video. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I think, you know, it's being transparent and sharing behind yeah. the scenes, you know, when I post a personal photo of yeah. myself or yeah. not even of me, even of my living room or whatever, and I tell yeah. a story in the caption, yeah hands down, always the highest engagement for my brand. And that's why it's so important to test because I went through a period too, where I've worked with graphic designers who have made, you know, all of my posts and the tips and stuff, crappy engagement. They were amazing and beautiful, but like they didn't get her and they didn't get any engagement. I've done the reels, right? I've done all those different things and I still like to play with those, but hands down, anytime I post even just a freaking selfie circa Mm -hmm. 2017 Instagram, you know, with a story, because that is my brand. And that is what my ideal customer is searching for. So you've got to know this stuff. Um, and I love that you shared that because yeah, I see it all the time. Like captions don't matter, but it's like what we talk about with SEO, like use your real estate, give the context to Google, give Instagram context for what your post is and who yeah. it's for. I love that you call out every time I see your feed. It's like, Hey, hairstylist. Yeah. I'm like, I know she's not talking to me, but I still love this post. <laughs> and it's so funny. Cause I have people who are like, you know, jewelry makers and stuff like that. Be like, does this still apply to me? Cause I know that you always say like, don't apply this stuff. Don't just like believe everything you see on Instagram. Cause that's another thing I always say, like filter your information. Like you are responsible for your business. And at the end of the day, like that like gut check everything. Mm -hmm. I have followed advice and I know that I'm not alone here as entrepreneurs. I followed advice that felt bad to me before and it didn't work for me. And it's not because it doesn't work in general. It's because you are like, you started your business to be an entrepreneur. You didn't start your business to like keep that employee mindset. right? Right. So, so important to filter like marketing advice, everything through like, does this feel good? Does this align? Does this work for me? Um, and then in terms of reels, honestly, Mm -hmm. I think everyone's going to be really happy when I say this, but like the simpler reels are working better for Mm me. I like the most, I mean, sometimes I'll share training audio and those like, because my audience like wants to be able to create quick stuff. So I'll say like, you know, use this trending audio and just pair it with a photo or like a slow-mo video of hair, things mm-hmm. like that. I don't count those as reach that counts, if that makes sense. Yeah, like those totally. I know are those are a little bit artificially inflated. So I've definitely had reels that hit like a million, two million, but it's because I was sharing a trending audio. The ones that are reaching my audience members, which you can now see on your analytics are like me sharing an insight or a quote or something like that. And then just having B-roll footage. Mm -hmm. These take less time to make than a Canva graphic, like literally. (laughs) <laughs> um, or just face to camera. Even if your face to camera reels don't get a ton of engagement, that is the kind of those are the ones that are really building trust. And like, Absolutely. you know, when like I think I said this um to you before, but like now that I know you and like hearing you speak on like your stories and all of that stuff, when I read your captions, I read them in your voice. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know how powerful that is though? Like that's huge. So And this was true even before, like we had connected further and we're talking more. Right. So, I mean, Amy Porterfield never had a conversation with her in my life, obviously. And when I read her content, I read it in Amy Porterfield's voice. Mm -hmm. That is the power of things like, you know, obviously we're not talking about long form content, but things like stories and voice to camera video and all of that kind of stuff is very important. Even if it's not getting, you know, viral engagement. Right. Right. And I think it all, you know, to kind of bring it full circle, like everything we keep talking about are like, there are obviously these tips and there are obviously these things to keep in mind, but like, I don't know, it's everything comes down to your brand to like, yes. oh my gosh, you know, like totally. what you say, how you say it, how you choose to show up, even what you were saying with like gut checking yourself. Like I always yeah. call this a brand alignment check. Like my mm, brand is so that. powerful and so strong that I yeah. can kind of use it as a compass, you know? And it's mm. like, that don't feel good. That feels good. We're going this way. We're going that way, you know, yeah. because 
I've created that. So I think just another reminder to everyone that like, if marketing is feeling hard, no matter what platform you're choosing, it's probably time to check your brand again yes. and make sure that like you have those pieces in place because your marketing only works if your brand is solid. 100%. And I always like, this is the analogy that I use, right? It's like, if you, and this, I mean, I know we're not all hairstylists here, so bear with me, but like at the beginning of your career, right? Like you learn color theory and all of these things. And like, you really do learn the foundations. And so the, the analogy I always give is like, can you imagine going to like an advanced balayage class, right? Where they're teaching you like advanced placement and they're teaching you, you know, what, toners to use and what colors to use before you'd ever learned color theory or how to section or part or brush hair, Mm -hmm. it's going to mean nothing to you, right? You're not going to be able to apply it. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be a disaster. And so that's how I feel about people applying these tips and hacks and strategies before laying the groundwork, before implementing these foundations, because any social media tip that I can give you is going to do absolutely nothing if you're not in alignment with your ideal client and your brand, and you're not clear on your message. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that's all. That's very it. important. Okay. <laughs> we have our our yet we have our uh, yeti mics on stands, but if we didn't, we would mic drop them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared the mute button would get hit again, so I'm just gonna leave mine where it is. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think we could talk forever. I'll probably have you come on again. You know, like I just, I really love what you have to share. You get me excited about social media again when we talk. And I think that that, I know that you love it. And we even talked about this beginning. You're like, you're going to hate me, but I love it. And I love that for you. And, you know, I think hearing you talk about it just reminds me like the purpose behind it, which, you know, is so, so important. So I, uh, I would love if you could share how anyone listening could follow you on social media and maybe a little bit about your agency that just launched. Yes. I'm so excited about this. So I've actually been doing marketing for other people behind the scenes for three years. Um, and this is officially like, we're giving it its own brand, its own name, because I work with predominantly on my agency side, um, course creators, coaches, and educators. And so it made sense to kind of separate a little bit. You can find me on Instagram at it's Jody Brown, and you can find my agency at align creative co or aligncreativeco.com. And basically what we do is we really focus on storytelling through content marketing. So we're not your agency who's going to be like, you know, really trying to go viral. We're not trying to, you know, what we're trying to do is connect you with the right people. And our clients have had incredible results with this by getting really clear. Um, you know, we've had clients who have become spokespeople for major like industry publications and joined really amazing education teams. And so it really is that power of using Instagram, not to go viral, but to build a personal brand that people give a shit about. And like, that's our gut check for all of our clients. It's like, if you're here to just make a quick buck, like that's not our jam. We are here to support people who truly want to make an impact and Mm want to like change the industry, disrupt their, you know, genre and just really help people. So that's what my agency does. (laughs) I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you. So definitely check that out, especially if you're feeling like you want to, you know, be on social media, but you yeah. just don't have, you know, like we talked about in the beginning, the you, bandwidth. you don't have the bandwidth and you have your expertise and chances are it's probably not marketing. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> most of us aren't, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I, I definitely encourage everyone to, to check it out and learn more and see how you know, Jody and her team can support you. So thank you for being thank on you. today. I loved chatting <laughs> with you. This was so much fun. And um, yeah, we'll have to get you on my podcast. I would love to talk about all things SEO. And I just always love chatting with you. So thank you for having me. Sounds good. I'll talk to you soon.